got a mess here and that is because I ran into an issue. I had to pull the Dremel out and do some Dremel work on this. Believe it or not, it wasn't a perfect fit. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, I must have done something wrong. That's what I was thinking too. I was thinking, well, I, I had to have missed something or something's backwards. So I took the whole axle apart and uh, put it back together several times. Now, right now it's just loosely fit. There's no screws holding that in right there. But uh, basically, those two brackets that hold the ring gear in place and the locker in place uh, were not fit properly. And I had to dremel them down, which completely caught me off guard here. That was not something I was expecting. Um, basically, there we go. Now you can see that fits nice and snug. There's the slightest gap, if any, right there. Well, before it was sitting up about like that, right there, like a noticeable difference. Like I could look in and see the ring gear spin and it wouldn't connect properly. And I, I just, I couldn't figure it out. And if I slid the tubes out like this, then all of a sudden it would fall into place. And so what I figured out was that basically these little guys right here I'll pull one of those off these right here the inside groove right there was not machined out where it needed to be so I'm trying to let this focus basically if you guys can see that right there here's a lip right here this outer lip wasn't deep enough so when it would go in, you guys, I'm trying to explain this properly here. You see how the tubes slide in? You see the tube appears on the inside there? Well, that part of the tube sits inside of that lip right there. Well, it wasn't machined down enough, and it was sitting on top of the tube, which was lifting up the entire uh, pumpkin housing there. So the pumpkin housing. I don't I'm making up my own terms here. It was lifting this up all the way. So it was there was a big gap. And I had gotten it all the way together before I realized that something was off. And what made me realize that it was off was when I got it all together and I went to put the uh four link bracket on, the holes wouldn't line up. I was like, what is going on? And then I realized, oh well the tubes aren't in all the way. So then I took it apart to get the tubes in all the way, put the tubes in all the way, and then it wouldn't close down. So just something to keep in mind, and Vanquish products, if you guys are watching this, might want to keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, I did have a clearance issue and had to do a little Dremel work to make this fit properly. Now, it should go back together. We're going to go ahead and start assembling it now. I'm going to put some more grease in there because I cleaned a lot of it out on accident. But, uh, yeah, that is what just happened. So, I apologize, guys. It wasn't, um, that didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped, but... Either way, I think we'll be alright. And since we have this apart, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that and smear some grease all down in here, like so. And we'll put a little bit more on my ring gear here. Actually, yeah, we'll put just a little bit here. The yellow ring gear. Alright. That should be more than enough. And just to help keep stuff out here, I am going to put a little seal here. Now this is going to leak out. I don't really care about that. It's more or less just to keep the mud out for as long as possible. Here pretty soon we'll have scaled gaskets on all these things. That would be pretty. I don't even know. I honestly think that would be kind of cool. I know it's overkill, but hey. Scale gaskets. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. <laughs> Alright. So get that like so. Boom, boom. Alright, let's go ahead and put this back together the way it's supposed to go together here. Where is it? This goes upside down. That sits like that. And we're just going to go ahead and put a little more Loctite on everything just because. Why not? 
Now I'm hoping this clears. I took the Dremel to it several times. I had to Dremel it down and then fit it, Dremel it and fit it. And uh, finally it's starting to feel like it's going to close up properly. But yeah, I'm kind of bummed that I had to do that. I didn't actually expect to uh, have any issues with fitment since the machining is so nice on these. So let's go ahead and fit this now. Boom. Alright. Now it's together. And I know it's all greasy, but I will clean that up later. So now that that's in, we're going to go ahead and start fitting all these screws back in here. There's quite a few of them that go around. Hold this pumpkin together. Be sure to pay attention to what screws you're putting in. Uh, some of them have a different size head and are meant for the top and some are meant for the bottom. So, just something to keep in mind there. As you guys saw before, we were assembling these Vanquish Products Curry F9 axles. Uh, these are for Axial SCX10. And uh, basically, they are awesome. They've been going together great, except for we ran into one small issue with this front axle, and that was uh, the bearing carriers were slightly off. So, um, I'm working right now with CKRC to see if we'll go ahead and get a replacement sent out. And... Uh, yeah, well, I'll just keep you guys posted on that, see how it goes. Uh, for now, though, uh, as you guys saw, I went back and I uh, modified those. Um, well, I guess I didn't capture that on video, but what I did was I went ahead and uh, dremeled down the lip on those bearing carriers to get them to go ahead and fit properly. And um, you can see here, they're together. It looks good. The uh, axle tubes are all the way in and flushed up. Um, you can see here I've got the, uh, whatever you want to call it here, the seal is nice and tight for the most part. And, uh, yeah, it should work properly. I can spin the gears with no issues, and, yeah, seems to be really good. So there we have it. Um, let's go ahead and move on today. We're going to start, or not start, but go ahead and finish this assembly. I got some coffee with me. I'm a very happy man right now. So let's go ahead and uh, make some stuff happen, Cap'n. Where we left la left off last time is, uh, well, at least when I realized there was a problem and I had to go through and fix that, uh, I was getting ready to put these on here, and these, go ahead and open this up here, are the uh, shock mounts, and link mounts, the lower shock mounts and link mounts. Um, there's also upper link mounts, which is the four link truss here. So that's where your upper links will mount. Most of you guys already know that. And these right here are the lower link mounts. Let that focus for a second so you guys can see. Super nice. Very good detail. I love the scale welds that they do. Just looks like stacks of dimes in there. Just miniature dimes. It's really cool. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get those installed today as well. Now, you want to make sure you get them right. This should be facing down, that should be facing down. This one goes there, that one goes there. I'm going to rotate this up so that they'll stay in place on their own. And once again, we're going to have to get some Loctite out. Let's throw this trash away. I cleaned up my shop again since the last video, so I uh, put my Loctite away. I'm actually going to take this watch off too. Let's get comfy. Alright, so you guys, let me know, what are you working on right now? Um, with these build videos, what I'm hoping for is that you guys will turn them on and uh, kind of just hang out with me and do some wrenching with me. And while you're doing your wrenching, you're listening to me do my wrenching, or we're hanging out together, you guys are watching, you know, whatever it may be. But that way you guys can leave me comments and stuff while you're doing this. Let me know, like, what you're wrenching on. Let me know what kind of problems you're running into. Um, you know, are you guys you know having problems with products are you uh everything going together smooth what are you assembling right now where are the products from did you guys you know get any recent orders from ckrc if so let me know what you ordered i really like the feedback i like to communicate with you guys i like to i don't know if you guys realize this but most youtubers once they hit like the five thousand to ten thousand subscriber mark oh i forgot to take my phone out they quit answering comments and they start acting like they're too good for their own audience and i, I despise that it actually frustrates me um so i go through and i try to answer 
at least 50% of the comments on my channel. Um, and if you guys haven't noticed, I usually answer close to 100% of the comments on my channel. Not all of them, but I get pretty dang close. You know, I gotta say at least 90% of the comments on my channel get answered. And um, that may go down in time as I get more and more comments, but still, I do my best. I find time every week to go through comments and try to make sure I'm answering comments. And uh, that's why I asked you guys to leave them for me. Because I want to know, man. It's supposed to be like a family. ESP is like a family. We're supposed to be like a... You know what I mean? When I bump into you guys out at events, you know, when I go to Axial Fest and I have guys come up and be like, Hey, yo, um, I sit down and I watch you with my kids and we build RC trucks together and then we go run them. We have fun and stuff. And, you know, people tell me that watching my show is part of their daily activities or their family activities or part of what uh you know keeps them in the hobby or got them into the hobby and that type of stuff i don't know if you guys realize but that is huge to me that is like uh that's important i mean obviously i don't make a lot of money from this so it's not for the money <laughs> it's, if i was just trying to work for money then i wouldn't be doing this i'd still be driving truck or uh, wrenching on real cars or uh you know, doing a bunch of other things that I could be doing, you know what I mean? Um, so, it obviously, it's not just for the money, because I don't have the most lucrative YouTube channel. But I'm really trying to, uh, you know, make sure that this is always going to be my full-time job. Right now, there's my full-time job, and I want to keep it that way. So, part of that is me actually turning this from a, a guy that makes videos for an audience to... A guy and his homies, his friends, his family, um, all doing something together collectively. And we meet up, you know, once, twice, three times a year at Axial Fest or Recon G6 or, uh, you know, a, a crawler comp or a birthday bash or whatever it may be. And, and we have some fun, you know what I mean? And it's like we already know each other, you know what I mean? And some of us already do know each other. I met a lot of you guys already. So it's, I don't know. That has nothing to do with the simple and curry axles, but I really wanted to let you guys know where my mind's at, man. And I really, really want to know what you're working on. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys are paying attention right there, but what I just did was installed these lower link mounts or brackets using a little bit of Loctite, blue Loctite, and uh, the hardware that came with it. So pretty excited which is almost identical to my Team k, &K hardware. It's pretty cool. Dang, that's sexy. Yeah. All right, scale porn. Now, coffee break. Mm -mm. You guys drink coffee when you work on your trucks? I did coffee. All right, so let's see, what do we got next? What do we go next? I'm thinking the next thing here we're gonna have to do is put these CVDs here in these VVD HDs. All right, these are, uh, I already showed you guys those in a previous video, but let's keep with the uh, theme here. Show you again. All right, so let's go ahead and pop these bad boys out. Now, I know most of you won't do this, but I am gonna read the instructions. I was just going to slide the axle through the uh, plastic and get to work because obviously we just got to put the, you know put the shafts in place but they do come with these so and I've never owned a set of these before so it's probably smart that I at least take a peek and make sure there's nothing excessive I need to do all right I need to put a little grease on that there I need to slide that there put that there word to the birds basically I just need to open it up and grease it All right, well do. Now, these instructions are pretty uh, hardcore here. I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually gonna do this. It's not instructions, it's more or less just like, uh, maybe it is instructions, recommendations. But um, they're talking about inspect parts for wear after each use, wipe down shafts with the light oil after each use. I always limit the steering to not push the CVD past its design limits of 50 degrees. For max strength, Vanquish built VVD 
to be as big as possible. This may cause some rubbing to the pin sleeve from the inside of the C-hub. You can file down the inside of the C-hub to make more room. Also check the C-hub screw that is not too long and uh, hits the pin sleeve. Huh. I'll make sure that it's not too long. And then Vanquish Products always use the best certified materials in its products, but care of parts under high load and stress still need to be cared for. Hmm. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, so I just read you guys instructions <laughs> for these. Anyways, let's go ahead and pop these bad boys apart and uh, lubricate them real quick because I want to I wanna make sure we do it right. I'm just going to throw a little utter butter on here. I'll use the little guy here. And I am going to just throw a tiny bit. Let's well, see what they say. Oh, they want you to put a little bit of grease on the inside of that there. So we'll pop this out. Boom. That's better. All right. So let's go ahead and pop this off here like so. Actually, let's go ahead and take some coffee. Mm. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this off. Oh, slide the little red ring off. Set that down there. And then we'll take this. We'll press the pin out. Make sure you don't drop that pin. I'll actually leave it in there partially, just so I know it's there. Then we'll press the cylinder out. That is in the center. All right. So now that's out. What you want to do is take a little grease. Make sure you got a little bit on that cylinder. Make sure it's coated. You don't want a ton, but you definitely want to make sure that there's enough on there to lubricate it. And then go to the inside of the cylinder. Put a little bit in here as well. Now, of course, this probably isn't how everybody does this, but that's how I'm going to do it because I use utter butter for almost everything. And we're going to see how it holds up here. So now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and put the uh, cylinder back in. Be sure to line the uh, holes up with the slots so you can get the pin back in and we're going to want to go ahead and take that slide it back in push the pin into place oh there we go almost lost it there we go alright clean it up you don't want a bunch of grease everywhere now Go ahead and slide this back on. Oh, did I do it backwards again? Sure did. There we go. It should go on by hand. You shouldn't have to use any crazy tools or anything. And there we have it. Assembled. So now, let's get this stuff out of the way here. I'm just going to slide these in and see how the fitment is. Get those lined up. Now, let's look at what else we're going to have to do here. I think the next thing we're going to have to do is get these C-hubs and these steering knuckles ready to go. So first things first, let's open these up. These are the eight degree C-hubs. Get those cracks open. Here we have them. Those are very nice, there's the focus.
clearly marked with an L for the left side. The other side, oh, sorry guys, shaking the camera on you. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. Anyways, we're going to figure this out as we go because, uh, yeah, I've never installed them before. So, here we go. Here are the uh, 8 degree knuckles from Vanquish Products. We're going to go ahead and rip those open as well. Mm -hmm. 